Hello, and welcome to Food and Dine. This is a Top Chef podcast. My name is Keish. And my name is Nyoki. And this week, we are going to be talking about Top Chef Season 21, Episode 5, Supper Club. And just to briefly recap this episode, there was a quick fire challenge involving the 10 sauce recipes of Chef Carson Goley, and the chef testants had to make a dish that, t- that used the sauce with ingredients that they bought at the farmer's market before they knew what the challenge was. And the winning quick fire dish was Charlie's. And then for the elimination challenge, they had to separate into two, well, it was a knife pull, and they had two teams, the green team and the purple team, and they had to host Top Chef's first ever supper club for the judges, as well as 40 supper club enthusiasts who knew that was a thing? <laughs> I didn't. Me either. <laughs> and the winning elimination dish was Dan's. And the chef who was sent to LCK this week was Charlie. Keish, what did you think of this episode? I thought it was great. I think that there was I there was a certain energy about it that made me feel like I was there with them experiencing it, which was nice. But obviously a a little stressful, but I say that every week, you know, just because I don't function well under time constraints. (laughs) So anytime they're like, the clock starts now, I'm like, oh, no, the clock started now. (laughs) So obviously, apart from that, I thought it was a very, a very nice and kind of like warm and supportive Mm -hmm. episode, despite the fact that it's getting harder and harder with each elimination. Okay, very nice. I liked this episode better than others, Mm. such as the last episode. (laughs) This was a vast improvement. (laughs) And I just want to pause for a moment for a Top Chef baggage check. I want to make it very clear. I love Top Chef. Okay. (laughs) That is why I'm here. (laughs) And I'm glad to know. (laughs) (laughs) And I realized in hindsight... So we received a a comment, which was wonderful to see because I I was delighted that at least one person has listened to at least part of one of our episodes. We're we're a small grassroots podcast. Yes, one could say that. (laughs) We're an indie podcast, one could say. And I actually found the comment to be very well written. And I really love their use of Carla's yucking the yum mm. the moment she said it that was iconic and the with the way this commenter used it mm-hmm. i thought was totally appropriate and actually completely fair mm. i did go hard on top chef last week i <laughs> i'm like i get it and i will not do that again in the future and and i felt i felt a little something when i saw that comment i felt really bad mm. i know for a fact that you are enjoying this and high speed dining is enjoying this and as i've mentioned before every time i have a top chef baggage check i just worry that i might be taking mm. your enjoyment and so it just it warms my heart <laughs> <that> so far <laughs> all of my top chef baggage is not weighing you down so that that no nah, i'm good that, don't worry <laughs> thank you no that, that's a relief and and also i did go back to the reddit <laughs> oh gosh <laughs> no 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 just that i wanted to okay. see, i wanted to see i actually put the question out there you, you mm. know the, the current state of top chef and the very interesting mm-hmm. thing is the feedback was fairly well split 50 50 people who are enjoying mm. the season and people who are mm-hmm. maybe feeling it's a bit mid or a bit meh if you mm. will <laughs> and it's not just top chef newbies who are enjoying the new season Grizzled Top Chef vets Mm -hmm. are also enjoying this season. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Which is, look, as a longtime Top Chef fan, I love to see it because it's a relief to me. And it also makes me feel very glad that people are enjoying it. But this also means that Mm -hmm. Kristen Kish, the winner of season 21, (laughs) will will continue very likely to get to host the show. And that makes me very happy. It also makes me happy that there will likely be future seasons of this show. <laughs> that that heartens me. Mm. But but also, I saw a lot of the messages, not just the original message that I saw that caused me to take a pause and go, you know, I dig a little, a, a little hard. Mm. But also the responses I saw on Reddit, which were, were kind of split 50-50, did make me sit down and think a little bit more about <laughs> perhaps my initial reaction. And, 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 I, and I'll say this. Mm-hmm. There are some things that are happening with the production and the editing, which may be in a way, unfortunately, highlighting when the chefs 
mess up. So for example, if there were more quick fires, you would have more dishes hmm. to stack up next to the chefs and go, oh, well, they maybe had that one off moment, but look at all these other great dishes they've done, right? Hmm. And another thing about them not having as many quick fires is when you have to cook that way, it's almost, you come into Top Chef, very few have that kind of experience. Maybe Kaylina would be the only one hmm. having been on Chopped Casino Royale, right? Yeah. But the rest of them have you cooked under under really hot lights with a serious time constraint without your recipe book hmm. at hand. And those quick fires are, are kind of a training ground. And there just hasn't been maybe enough of that for the chef testants this season, maybe. Hmm. And there are other things, too, that the commenters pointed out. That, for example, when they've been grocery shopping, not all of those have been timed. Only some of them have been. And oh. one of the things I'll say this is, for example, chef testants who have gone to LCK and have come back, even when they haven't won they've done better mm. or they've done, they've done better than they did when they, before they were uh, sent to LCK because that experience mm. of having to cook on your feet time and time again, under the hot lights, no recipes, it hones you. It, it's, it really trains you to, to do, to, to do a little bit better. And so by them yeah. not having quick fire challenges and some of their shops and some of the other things not be timed, it's, almost in a sense handicapping them in the sense that it's giving them too much time to think mm. it's maybe giving some of them time mm. to overthink <laughs> and, and second think would charlie have fired his fish as early if he hadn't had time to overthink about it and think about it and mm. think about it these are all questions that cannot be answered but it's some things that people pointed out to me you know and i thought oh yeah these yeah. are these are really really good points and so again i will say in the future, if people think I'm going too hard, <laughs> please refer to my episode for the right way baggage check. And in the future, if people think I'm going too easy, please refer to my episode for <laughs> top check the baggage check. And I will close out this baggage check with this comment. And someone pointed this out to me. In one of the trailers that dropped for the season, and this, this trailer dropped on March 2nd. Somehow I, I saw mm. other trailers. I did not see this trailer. In this particular mm -hmm. trailer, they, so this is not a spoiler. In this trailer, apparently midway through the season, Gail and Tom are going to join Kristen in the Quick Fire Challenge kitchen, and they will be judging the Quick Fires alongside her. Oh. And in a major, and again, since this was in the trailer, so it's not a spoiler, in a major twist, those Quick Fires will factor in to the eliminations. Hmm. And, and I have a feeling, I have a feeling that fear... Okay, let me say, I have a feeling and a hope <laughs> that that fear, mm -hmm. <laughs> that culinary fear <laughs> might, oh, ins gosh. <laughs> might inspire some some culinary, hopefully culinary genius down the road. We shall okay. see. We shall see. And that is my yeah. my Top Chef baggage check for this week. Okay. I don't know. I, that, was, that, was a, that, was, that, was, that was a pretty light baggage check. I don't know. You could probably bring that as a carry-on. <laughs> I don't think that one needs to go into into the into the bottom of the plane. I think that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I got to say culinary fear. That's something I feel every time I step in the kitchen. Doesn't even matter if I'm just cooking for myself. I'm like, oh, what am I going to do today? <laughs> so I like that. Just anything I feel every time I open. You feel it too? I'm glad. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. I open my fridge. Oh, what am I going to microwave today? <sighs> yeah, what am I going to microwave today? <laughs> Cheerios? No, wait, that's not right. <laughs> so to go a little more in-depth into the quick fire challenge. Mm -hmm. So the chef testants had to make variations on 10 different sauces. And mm -hmm. I personally had never heard of this chef, Chef Carson Gully. And I also hadn't heard of most of these sauces either. <laughs> yeah, no, me neither. <laughs> and I also thought it was super fun that they had to... <laughs> shop without knowing what the challenge was talk about that that's a level beyond culinary fear that's that's what's straight up terror that's abject terror yeah <laughs> you're right yeah. <laughs> and then so the winning dish was charlie's and he so he got the creole sauce mm -hmm. and he made a fingerling potato with honey and tomato chev mm. and roasted pepper creole sauce and the judges said that it was fresh and that it had a kick and that it really reflected the original sauce well that's a solid review yeah Keish, was there a standout dish for you for the quick fire yes Ooh. there was i was i was uh i was intrigued by what um what savannah had 
going on. Oh. She had a mustard and peach vinaigrette, which sounded really nice. Yeah. I'm a sucker for peaches. I think like that's part of so like I, I spend summers in the Midwest, <laughs> very on brand for the season. Um <laughs> And one of the things we would always do is we'd go and we'd find like the local Amish family and buy just like a bucket of peaches. And so peaches are something that are like steeped in nostalgia for me. And I just love the flavor. So anytime there's something with peaches in it, I'm like, yeah, OK, I'm there for it. Um, and the idea of a peach and mustard vinaigrette sounds really bright and summery. And I feel like that's something that would bring me back to my childhood. Um, unfortunately, I don't like poached eggs, though. And that was like the rest of the dish. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe I'd ask for like one of those little like you, like you know you get those little ketchup cups at fast food restaurants maybe just ask for a little paper cup full of the the vinaigrette <laughs> just take it like a shot <laughs> I don't know <laughs> well, well you're in good company because Guy Fieri doesn't like eggs either he doesn't <gasps> oh my gosh wait I feel so so seen oh my I love that shit <laughs> that's such good news for me today <laughs> Thank you, thank you. I gotta say though, with the the the, um, the element of not knowing what the challenge is and having to shop at that farmer's market, holy cow, like I cannot imagine the chaos that descended on this peaceful farmer's market the moment they unleashed these chef testants because <laughs> I would be stressed out of my mind too. And they're like running around, they're like, please, excuse me. No, please, I need to pay for this now. And I'm like, oh gosh, I feel so bad for them. Like. <laughs> They're they're working real hard. You've never seen more anxiety in a farmer's market before, and that's guaranteed. Like for good reason too. <laughs> it was like running of the sh of the bulls. It was, it was, and I was like, oh my gosh, because you know they don't have like every ingredient at a farmer's market. It's beneficial because there's a lot of fresh things, mm -hmm. a lot of organic things, which is really nice. Some like really unique stuff. Rossica found the jalapeno popcorn. I think that's what it was. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, you're not going to get necessarily the kitchen staples that you're used to. Mm -hmm. So I think they did a really good job with what they had and taking that extra level into consideration, not just like it being you're cooking, you're, you're getting ingredients blind. Yeah. But the fact that you're getting limited ingredients blind. Yeah. The more I think about it, the more difficult it becomes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it seems like they all did really well. In fact, maybe the mm -hmm. in my mind, the one who was really handicapped by having to buy before she knew what she was working with was maybe Michelle with the raisin sauce. Yeah, because it said it was like a very specific raisin sauce pairs very specifically with certain dishes. So it's not like you could just put it with anything. Mm -mm. Yeah. So I... But she pulled she pulled through. She did what she could with it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's respect. Respect right there. Because if I got raisin sauce, <laughs> I think personally I would give up. <laughs> and then, oh my goodness, what was it Kamau said? He said it was Taylor Swift and Slipknot. <laughs> oh, yeah. Happening at the same time, like being played at the same I've never heard such a... That's such a wild... <laughs> Slipknot and Taylor Swift have never crossed my mind at the same time. So... <laughs> Not till this episode. <laughs> Not till now. And I'm surprised because it came from the Top Chef episode. I wasn't thinking I was going to think about Slipknot or Taylor Swift during a Top Chef episode. Or, or ever. <laughs> or or ever at the same time, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> I, I enjoyed him as a, as a guest judge for sure. He was. Yeah. He was quick with those one liners. Yeah, he was. And he did. He did bring like a I mean, as is his job, he brought a lightness. I feel to mm -hmm. to the the judging table and everything, which is always really nice because especially being the final 10, it does get stressful, mm -hmm. you know, like. I'm attached to these chefs. Like, <laughs> I want them to do well. So having him kind of bringing in just a little bit of like a, like when there was the comedian from the second episode. Oh, yeah. His name was Charlie. Mm -hmm. I was just kind of like, you know, like someone to bring like a more, like kind of our shoes, like our, our perspective to it, just like a layman in terms of all of the culinary majesty that's going on. So, yeah. Yeah, I liked him. I thought he was good. Yeah, watching um, Michelle struggle and just mm. oh no, <laughs> working with these mysterious sauces. I I wanted to ask you, did did you do your what would Keish do for the quick fire? I did, I did. I was so I yeah okay. So <laughs> what? How? I was like, I don't know what to do. What did you do? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, I kind of cheated a little oh, bit, but because I'm not bound by constraints that they are, I feel like it's fine. Okay, so 
So here's what I did. Um, I I am aware that they had those sauces that they picked out for the chef testants to work with, but I did my own digging. And if any of our listens, listeners are curious, if you go to the University of Wisconsin Madison Library search, you can find Chef Gully's cookbook. Oh, um, and it has all of his recipes. And I downloaded it as a PDF for free. You don't need like a student card or anything. So if you're interested in that, go do it because, oh my gosh, this is like a, a like a, a cornerstone of work. I feel like now that I've learned a little bit about him from Top Chef. Like, of course, go look at it. He has these incredible, like, lists of, of ingredients and ways to use sauces and all these things that, like, I wouldn't think about combining, you know, these two flavors. Yeah. Like, that, that's not something that ever crossed my mind. But he did it. And if he did it, it worked to some extent, at least, because he was, he was like a major chef in, in their dining halls and all this stuff and had his own cooking show. So, yeah, I would definitely recommend going and checking that out. Wow. Again, go to the... University of Wisconsin Madison Libraries search page um, on the internet, and just look up Chef Carson Gully, and you'll find it. Um, and so I went to his sauces section of his cookbook <laughs> to pick out my own sauce. I know they had to pick blind, but I I did a little bit of what Laura did, and I I previewed some of those recipe cards because I'm not about to I'm not about to get stuck with uh, what like fish sauce. <laughs> Fish essence. Fish essence is one of the ones, and yeah, that's that's a that's a, a thing in the the cookbook. Um, oh, wow. Or cardinal sauce. What's cardinal sauce? Oh. I don't know. Anyway, I wasn't gonna get stuck with one of those, so I picked barbecue sauce. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice, Laura. I mean, I mean, quiche. Oh yeah, thanks, thanks. I um, I this, I I picked barbecue sauce. I want to say I did it for Michelle because Aww. she's the coolest and she's a pit master. I also did it because I was scared of the other sauces because <laughs> i don't know how to use them mm. i'm like i'm a home cook i don't know what to do with raisin sauce like <laughs> michelle did like i don't know how to handle that um there, there's like cranberry sauce as well and i'm not i'm not big on cranberries either so <laughs> barbecue sauce is what i'm going with i'll give you a little preview of the the ingredients because i have it pulled up right here so it takes butter or good fat cup of finally or not a cup a fourth a cup of uh, finely chopped onions, there's white pepper, sugar, celery, salt, paprika, garlic vinegar, uh, seasoned stock, teaspoon, one teaspoon of Tabasco sauce, two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. I'm a big Worcestershire fan, so that 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 reads well. Um, and chili sauce. And so you like combine all that. There's there's some cooking time with it. Um, and it just sounds good. It sounds sounds like a good solid barbecue sauce. So what I'm doing for what would quiche do? Um, I've pulled together a shredded chicken honey garlic barbecue sauce flatbread with banana peppers, pan seared spicy broccoli florets, and mozzarella. If you think about this a little bit deeply, you'll realize that what I'm making is a pizza. However, I don't think that would be looked upon very kindly in the Top Chef universe, so I'm calling it a flatbread. <laughs> yes! I won't have Gail coming after me. I will not. <laughs> See if I can just fly by under the radar mm -hmm, with that. Mm -hmm, with your flatbread. But I'm not being judged on it, so you know what? It's fine. I can do what I want. <laughs> Oh, your cheesy flatbread mm -hmm. would have been really great in what episode? Take it cheesy by chance. Take it cheesy. Yeah, it definitely would have. That would have been that would have been a good time. This dish sounds incredible. I mean, you had me at good fat. <laughs> That's not even my part of it. That's <laughs> Chef Gully's part of it. You're like, you had me at the part where you were using someone else's recipe. You're so clever. Oh, thank you. <laughs> but thank you. I will take it. I will take it. Since I am honoring his sauce, I will take that. Mm -hmm. Honestly? Where do I think you would stack up in this quick? I, I don't think you would have been in the bottom. I think I might have been floating in the middle. Maybe like middle to bottom. I'm, I'm going to say mid. 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 I'm mid. I'm mid. I'll take that. You know, I'm like, I'm taking a swing because like. It's a flatbread. You know, it's it's the honey, honey barbecue, honey garlic barbecue. But then also with like, I like, I wanted something else on it beside the banana peppers and the protein. So I was like broccoli florets, but like pan seared. But see, I don't know how well that would fit with like a honey garlic thing, you know, oh. like a honey garlic barbecue sauce at that. So I'm taking a swing. It might be a miss. I'm standing by it, though. <laughs> so that's what quiche has done today. <laughs> 
I love it. Stand behind your dish. Yes. An all-time classic Top Chef mantra. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. And that, that's what I'm doing. I'm adopting that mentality. I'm going to do it. They, they don't say that often enough in the new season. No, I mean, I, I wouldn't know. <laughs> I'm still new here. <laughs> But I did, I did kind of take a page from your book. I visited, not on purpose, but I did visit Reddit briefly because. <laughs> oh no! I, <laughs> I was curious while I was constructing this food. I was like, okay, is it wrong to put bacon on a barbecue sauce base, like flatbread oh. dish? Essentially, I was like, would that be wrong? Would that be weird? And that was a question that someone asked. Someone had asked, is it wrong to put barbecue sauce on bacon? It was a little flipped, but it's the same uh-huh. the same essence. Uh-huh. And I love the response, so I'm just going to read it to you. Uh-huh. And this has eight upvotes on Reddit as of like three years ago. He says, no, bro, you can put whatever you want on whatever you eat. Just make sure it doesn't kill you. And I stand by that. I love that. <laughs> yes! Yeah. So that's why that was my validation from Reddit. I'm standing by this dish. Absolutely. Because <laughs> it's not going to kill you. So <laughs> I'll stand by it. <laughs> it's a very low bar. <laughs> hey, it's got you in the middle. It did. Yeah. If it, get, if it got me in the middle, I'm not being, I'm not going home today. I'm not winning. I'm okay with that. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> uh, now we were talking a bit about sauces and I know you wanted to discuss some sauces. So what have you got for us, Noki? Yeah. The reason we do not have a Top Chef Learning Moment segment in my mind is because every time, every other time someone names their dish, it's just a top chef learning moment for me. It really is. Oh, me too. What is that? What's Epis? What? I'm like, huh? <laughs> I still don't know. Rom schnitzel? What? <laughs> These sauces, there, there were 10 of them and 10 of them, I thought, mm-hmm. a lot of them, I thought I can maybe guess, Yeah. but a couple of them were complete far out. So right. one already came up, the raisin sauce, Michelle's raisin sauce. Raisin sauce. Which, had you oh, ever he- heard of this before? No. And since I'm so in Michelle's corner, I was getting so stressed out. I was like, just do right by her, please. Oh my gosh. (laughs) I don't know what a raisin sauce is. (laughs) So I I was Googling around and I I wish I had been as smart as you and thought to go to the university website because I was trying to find (laughs) (laughs) Chef Carson Goley's actual recipes. But what I did find online, so raisin sauce appears to contain and recipes obviously probably vary. So this may not match up with yes. Chef Carson Gullies, but generally mm-hmm. this is what the ether sphere, the ether sphere says that raisin sauce is, what the ingredients are, mm-hmm. brown sugar, corn starch, and mustard. So already right there, what, what's going on here? Hmm. Water, raisins, hmm. vinegar, okay. lemon juice, and the zest of the lemon and, and butter. I'm scared. Yeah. And, 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 Michelle said it was like a sweet and sour. I'm trying to envision what this could possibly have tasted like. I, I really felt for her because mm. even after I looked it up. I'm still confused. Even having it all written out in front of me, I I'm, I'm still don't know what's going on. It's a head scratcher. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a little confusing. Mm. Would you try it if you were if if raisin sauce was put in front of you in one of those little paper ketchup cups from a fast food restaurant? Would you would you down that? Would you try it? Who's the chef? <laughs> <laughs> Carson Gully himself. Obviously, yes, I would try it in that case. Made the sauce for you. Okay, all right. That's (laughs) that's a correct response. (laughs) Hundreds of thousands of students survived his cooking. Clearly, he was an accoladed chef. I would try it. They must have enjoyed it, too, because he was was there for a while, I believe. So, yeah, okay. All right, all right. I'll take that. Yeah, thank you for debunking the raisin sauce for us. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And then the other one that was a head-scratcher for me was Figaro sauce. Mm, Yeah. Okay, had you ever heard of, I'm going to guess, no, 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 <laughs> me. <laughs> no, and I'm also, that was, that was one, because like with raisin sauce, I'm like, okay, it has raisins, but then with Figaro sauce, I'm like, what's a Figaro? What's a, what, <laughs> is there, is there a thing in it called a Figaro, or is this like a name for a sauce that doesn't even contain something in the name? Like, I don't know what it is. I so. wish I had thought up, thought to look up the meaning of Figaro. Because I didn't. I only looked up the ingredients I didn't either. for the sauce. And the only other <laughs> We do our research here on Food and Dime. <laughs> the only other use of Figaro that I know is what is it, the marriage of Figaro, the opera? Oh yeah, the, like an op- yeah, that's an opera word. That's an Italian opera word thing. Yeah, yeah. Why is it a sauce? <laughs> <laughs> why is it a sauce? Number one question. Why is it a sauce? <laughs> <laughs> so Figaro sauce, not an opera, mm-hmm. apparently. It is a okay. Hollandaise sauce. 
with tomato puree mm. and minced parsley. Mm. Not as rough a road as raisin sauce. No. But I'm still a little confused by it, maybe. I, I'm a little... I'm, what? <laughs> I feel like I'm, I'm just not... I'm not in the, the complex cooking uh-huh. world, you know? I'm not, I'm not in it enough yet. So I see all these ingredients and I'm like, how do these fit together? Oh my gosh. And I'm sure they fit together well, but my, my baby cooking brain can't put it together. I don't understand. <laughs> hey, same, same. <laughs> That's the Top Chef learning moment. Stop it. Yeah. Big learning moment. Oh my gosh. There's... It's cool to see recipes from like decades ago Mm. to see how different ingredients were used and how tastes have changed. Oh, yeah. And like what's popular now, what's popular then, even regionally. Like I got a cookbook from the Midwest from like I want to say like the 60s or something like that. It scared me, man. There were some recipes in there that I was like, (laughs) what? And I asked my mom and she's like, oh, yeah, that was really popular. That was really popular back then. And I'm like, why? (laughs) Try, try ancient Rome. A popular condiment was garum. Okay. And it's believed it was some kind of maybe fish sauce, maybe, maybe oil or something. Okay. But it's antecedents, no, predecessor. No, what is it when you have children? Descendants? It's descendant sauce. (laughs) What? (laughs) Anyway, sauces that are, that have, that are descended from, oh. let's say that garum is the original, and the sauces that have descended okay, okay. are as varied as fish sauce, Worcestershire, A1 steak sauce, ketchup. What? And when I learned that, it made me re- rethink what I thought about ketchup, which I love. I love mustard more. Mustard's great, I gotta say. <laughs> but yes, ketchup has a very lofty, very lofty hmm. ancient Roman times to us. Oh, wow. From garum to ketchup. And I'm probably pronouncing... I'm wrong. <laughs> I do not speak ancient Latin. <laughs> That's fine. I mean, they're not around to comment on it. So <laughs> Latin's a dead language anyway. It's not like anyone knows how to pronounce it for real. You can make estimations that you can't actually know. So that's your culinary TMI for today. <laughs> Are you kidding? That's fascinating. No, that is not a too much information. That's a give me more information. That's <laughs> I never thought about food in terms of like ancestry.com you know <laughs> <laughs> to, to bring the mood down just a little bit but just very briefly oh okay <laughs> i have a note of dank are you gonna tell me something sad about ketchup no no oh okay, no okay. no <laughs> as long as you're not telling me anything sad about ketchup <laughs> no i'm the type of person that i need about an ounce of ketchup for every french fry no i love i love ketchup i love that nice nice i love ketchup Calm down now. Calm down. <laughs> I put a little horseradish in it, a little horseradish in the ketchup, and you mix it up. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah she yeah. a chef. She a chef. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So in my note, my note of dank, mm-hmm. and then this note of dank is going to carry over into the elimination challenge. All right. Because it involves Laura. Mm. Mm. I love the side eye that Dan gave when she was in the top three of the quick fire. Mm. Because unlike the other chef testants, who just took the card they were given. Mm. She was up there flipping through them yeah. to get the one that she wanted. Ooh. I'm going to save the rest of this note of dank for the elimination because <laughs> our our dear Laura really came out of the wood woodwork today. <laughs> copy. Yeah, the episode did did highlight her quite a bit. It is true. It's, it certainly did. <laughs> it did. <laughs> so that, that's my that's my note of dank for, this, uh, for the quick fire. Did you have any tidbits for the quick fire? I do. I do have a couple tidbits. Um, One, I thought I loved learning a little bit of Savannah lore, some of her backstory. I thought it was so cute how her boyfriend was helping her train for Top Chef by giving her quick fire challenges. That is adorable. Oh my gosh. (laughs) So cute. Loved it. Um, I think that the start of the episode was hilarious where they just put phones in rooms and then all of a sudden Kristen's talking to them <laughs> from the phones. I thought that was like low-key kind of mission impossible and kind of hilarious. Like mildly terrifying culinary cul- culinary terror. Yeah. Culinary terror. Culinary terror. Mm-hmm. Um I liked the quote from Michelle when she got the raisin sauce. She said, why is this a recipe? And <laughs> That's an honest reaction. I agree. Why is this a recipe? <laughs> loved it. Loved it. Loved it. Um. Oh, and just just for me, just because, you know, Manny and Michelle love them so much. Team M&M. I love them so much. Team M&M. They were sharing that like kitchen bench and I was like, yes, the faves. Oh, that's so good. I love to see it. <laughs> and lastly, I loved the supportive atmosphere 
of when they finished that quick fire challenge on that little rooftop area, there were people down on the street cheering for them. I thought that was so sweet because you know what? They are working really hard. It's a competition, but they all got there based on their own merit and they deserve that kind of respect. Like they did it. They're doing a great job. And yeah, they should get some applause for it. I will say. <laughs> I love that moment. I thought it was super cute. And, and I thought, because they clearly tore through that farmer's market. And so oh my gosh, I, yeah. I, I love that the, the crowd there glommed onto what was happening, mm -hmm. realized where they were, and then cheered them on. I thought that was great. Yeah. Because I yeah. If, if I had been there, I would have been like the same, like, oh my gosh, Top Chef is happening right here at my farmer's market. Oh, I know. You would have been so excited. You would have you would have found your way into that elevator and up to the rooftop. I know you would have. <laughs> <laughs> here, you forgot your raisins, Michelle. You're like, what are we cooking up here today, guys? <laughs> I'm actually a guest judge. Um, <laughs> yeah. Can I have some of that food, please? <laughs> well, that was actually going to be my last tidbit for the quick fire. Was it? Oh. Because I thought for sure that this would be your tidbit. Mm -hmm. So I do have an alternate last tidbit for the quick fire. And that is. Okay. I thought it was so cute when the guest judge Kamau was talking to Manny mm -hmm. and asking him if mm -hmm. he worked out. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That was so funny. <laughs> He's like, yeah, these are gym muscles. That is, that is a good moment. I did appreciate that. I thought that was very funny. <laughs> and I said to myself, as I was writing it down, I was like, oh, now scratch that out. Surely Keish who's Team m and is going to have that answer. Keisha's is going to mention it. Why didn't I mention it? Thank you for thank you for thank you for picking up my slack. I really did drop the ball on that one. You're right. You're right. <laughs> so that that's my tidbit for the for the quick fire. <laughs> so, the elimination challenge just to refresh everyone. This one mm -hmm. was a knife pull for a team challenge, two teams. Mm -hmm. And it's so funny to me that how the I, I wonder who gets to choose the colors. Like what a fun job. Oh, let's make it purple and green. Let's make it, yeah. pink and, you know, purple. Let's make it, you know, yeah. whatever colors. So there's two teams, green and purple, and they had to host Top mm -hmm. Chef's first ever supper club. There were the judges they had to feed, plus 40 supper club enthusiasts. Let's see, the menu was a relish, a fish dish, a chicken dish, a beef dish, and a dessert. Let's see, on the green team was Amanda, Laura, Danny, Charlie, and Manny. And then on the purple team was Kevin, Michelle, let's see, Dan and Savannah, and the one with immunity, Rossica. Mm -hmm. The winning elimination dish, the winner of the elimination was Dan, and he had to make oh, the relish, the, the, the crudité. And so he made a chicken liver mousse that everyone just raved over, pickled shallots, fried seed toast. Let's see, Tom said, flawless execution that's really high praise coming from tom perfect level of acidity mm -hmm. they made it sound really really yummy <laughs> and yeah. then the chef who got sent to lck that was charlie on the green team mm -hmm. with his fish that he, as we mentioned earlier he fired too soon mm -hmm. it was an epis rubbed fried trout and epis is just a spice blend cajun and creole spice blend okay and so an epis rubbed fried trout coconut epi sauce and preserved lemon pickles. Yeah, as we mentioned, he fired his fish too early. And so he did get sent to Last Chance Kitchen. Mm -hmm. So were there any standout dishes in the Elimination Challenge, Quiche? For me. Oh. Michelle. Oh, <laughs> surprise, surprise. Surprise, surprise. I'm not even doing this just because, like, I'm so in her corner. Like, sincerely, her dessert sounded so, so enticing. It sounded light. It sounded delicious. Personally, I it's okay. I love food and it's weird because I do like certain like meat dishes, but I feel like if I wanted to, it wouldn't be too hard for me to become a vegetarian sure. because I don't prefer meat generally, mm. um, which I know is weird because I've also been in Michelle's corner because she's a pit master, but barbecued meat is different because it's different. Okay. I don't need to explain it. It's just better. Mm -hmm. um, but like regular cooked meat dishes and other stuff like that. I'm like, eh, I could take it or leave it. But she made a coconut bread pudding mm -hmm. with a pineapple cream sauce. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Speechless. That sounds so, so good. Yeah. I love that. I love this is a little bit of a tidbit, but I'm going to put, put it in here early. I loved it when they were in front of the judges table and... It was Tom, I believe. Right, Tom? Mm -hmm. And he was like, I hardly got any pineapple. And she's like, well, if you wanted more pineapple <laughs> next time, 
maybe consider giving us a little more of a budget. <laughs> and I was like, that's fair. Yeah, because she was she was giving. She gave the pineapple to her teammate yep. to help the process because, yep. like she said, she's a team player. So she's going to like make sure everything is squared away for the whole team, not just for herself. And I loved that. And so, yeah, he got a little less pineapple. <laughs> Maybe if he chipped in five bucks personally, <laughs> then he'd have some more pineapple. <laughs> Fair. Yeah. Was there any dish that stood out for you? The dish that stood out to me for the elimination was our girl Amanda. Mm. <laughs> With her chicken, her hot chicken katsu. Mm. I love hot chicken. And so it, it sounded good. It looked good. I felt so bad that she didn't get to hear the compliments in real time. I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Since her team was on the bottom and it sounds like pretty much only her dish was the one that they liked. And mm -hmm. yeah, and maybe if her team had been on the winning side, well, it'd be a different story. Her dish maybe might have won. <laughs> yeah, completely different. Yeah. For, for her maybe. team. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it was a hot chicken katsu, mm. Szechuan mala spice, apple miso mustard sauce mm. with red cabbage and a sauerkraut relish. And they said that Amanda just crushed it, that the, the flavors were just knocked it out of the park. They just <laughs> raved about it. <laughs> I love that. They said it was fried nicely, cabbage is well seasoned, technically spot on dish. Mm. Like, I would want to try that. <laughs> I agree. And so another dish that stood out to me for all the wrong reason. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Our girl, Laura. Yeah. Yeah. And so now we're going to segue into the rest of my notes of Dank. All right. <laughs> Welcome the notes of Dank. Let us begin. <laughs> oh, Laura. So Laura is getting, well, in this episode at least, she got what we Top Chef, grizzled Top Chef veterans like to call the villain edit. Mm. <laughs> and she unfortunately really lived down to it. <laughs> so... Yeah, it started with the quick fire with her rifling through the cards when everyone else just took the card that they got. And yeah, yeah, they didn't say she couldn't do that. So, you know, OK, she is playing to win and it did put her in the top. You go, girl. Yeah. You played to win. They didn't say you couldn't do it. She did it. However, she took that attitude into a team challenge. And I got to say, if you've ever watched previous seasons of Top Chef, sometimes it plays it, 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 it. it it bodes well for you to play well with your teammates. <laughs> and mm. and I'm not saying that her team would have been on the top if she'd been friendlier with the budget, <laughs> but it cannot have mm. helped. My man, my, my new man, Danny, only had $75. She hoovered yeah, up. For 40, 40 people plus the judges. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so that means that she soaked up because when she got to the line, it was like $600. So <laughs> she took... From six hundred mm. up to what? Not she only left him seventy five dollars. She took the rest. Oh geez, that's a lot. Yeah, I I actually I'm not even spending that much on groceries for I, a month. I kind of I kind of missed it initially when I was watching because you know it's grocery shopping whatever. Mm -hmm. And I, I right, and then yeah. I realized oh, I actually paid more attention to these team challenge budget things because it's coming up a lot. So I rewatched it mm -hmm. and I was pretty horrified <laughs> when they were going oh. through the checkout and and I felt the tension of her teammates because. When everyone got through, yeah. $600, no problem. And she steps up ahead of Danny. And then in the end, she produced two dishes. She only had to make one. Right. And the dish that she ended up making <laughs> with her extra money that she took from Danny for her two dishes didn't impress the judges at all. What did she make? She made it a four, four leches instead of a trace leches mm -hmm. with the fourth leche yeah. being a cocktail that no one asked for. <laughs> she made a trace leches cake with brandy cherries and then... The fourth leche was a chocolate brandy cocktail. The general assessment at the table was that it was soggy. It was too milky. It was too sweet. Neither neither dish was really good. They were just fine, but they didn't justify the extra budget. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> that is my note of dank. So in terms of my note of dank and, and being a team player mm -hmm. in the quick fire, you, you may, you know, Dan gave her the side eye, but she didn't do anything wrong. Girl playing to win. She got in the top three. Hey, do what you got to do. She didn't do anything against the rules. And again, she didn't do anything against the rules of the elimination. <laughs> <laughs> but, but my goodness, there's a, there's a point where you're playing to win and a point where you're actually, if you're hurting your team, you're not really playing to win. Right. It, it behooves you. In her case, she didn't necessarily take down her team. 
It has happened in seasons past where someone taking all the budget oh. brings down the team. So, for mm. example, just last yeah. season, All Stars, they had a picnic episode and they had two teams, Team Blue, Team Yellow. Mm-hmm. And mm. Tom on the yellow team hoovered up almost all the budget for this oh no <laughs> chilled chapino salad that he wanted to make. And the end, okay. his team ended up being the losing team because nobody had enough money. No one could truly execute their dishes mm. the way they were supposed to. And then it also Jeez. happened. <laughs> same thing happened in Top Chef Kentucky, season 16. It was episode two. And there was, again, a team challenge. And <laughs> one person on one of the teams, which ended up being the bottom team, his name was actual, his real name is Edmund Conrad. But he got the nickname Eddie mm. Money on the series. Eddie from his, Money, oh my god! From this one, because he didn't, he not unlike Laura, he did not do this t- intentionally. Laura's was very intentional, <laughs> but mm. what he did is he was going to make a lamb dish, and they didn't have the lamb that he wanted, and so he was he opted for the lamb rack, which is way way more expensive. Oh. And so okay. he blew yeah. six hundred dollars of his team's budget. Like they, I think each team had a thousand dollars and he took up and, and what episode two, that meant that there were what, 10 chefs or there was a lot of chefs on both sides. They needed that money. Right. And because no one could really execute their dishes the way they needed to be, his team was on the bottom. And so mm. <laughs> when that was happening, all I could think was, Laura, have you not watched previous episodes or seasons of Top Chef where if you take all the money, mm. you're hurting your team and putting the chances of you all yeah. being on the bottom that much higher. Now, granted, in her case, turned out her taking up all the money wasn't the reason her team was on the bottom. It was technical errors, mm. like firing the fish too soon. Yeah. But she should have been sent home. Ooh, controversial take. <laughs> but they don't, but they don't, but you don't get you don't get sent home for being a bad team player, right? Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. I I I didn't know that that is something that has occurred before. I mean, it makes sense. There's been 20 seasons of Top Chef, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. I'm sure we're seeing some some repeated themes. Mm-hmm. Um I was sad to see Charlie go home. Yeah, because he made a banging dish in the quick fire. And mm-hmm. apparently the he made a great dish, great tasting dish. <laughs> Aside from the fact that he fired his fish too soon. And if he had if he had not yeah. possibly overthought it, right? Mm-hmm. And fired his fish too soon, he might have had one of the better dishes of the evening. Yeah. That's true. That's true. I, I am happy for him though, because I remember he's really had some like the the true hills and valleys in this one episode yeah. like wins the quick fire has to go home for the elimination challenge but it was so sweet when he was he was so excited about the money that he won for the quick fire mm-hmm. that he gets to pay for his wedding that is charlie lore and that's so sweet i loved hearing that but it did make him going to lck and elimination all that more painful yeah yeah well, you yeah. know, things can change. Oh, also, there, there have been other Top Chef funded weddings. I remember <laughs> Top Chef All Star. Have there been? <laughs> well, no. In, this is also a repeated theme? <laughs> no, in the sense of people getting engaged or something, you know, and relating to Top Chef. So, for mm. example, and, and then you win the prize money. And, and it's like a, one of the uh, All Stars, um, Tiffany Dairy, she won a, a challenge. And so she was able to pay for some things for her wedding. It's always nice to see. Oh. That is nice. I love that. Top Chef funding. Funding love. So cute. <laughs> and to lift us up out of this, I did enjoy seeing the rest of every all the other chef testers actually pulling together. And Laura did yeah. help him cook his fish, although I don't know how I feel about mm-hmm. that, given her performance otherwise. Yeah. But it was nice to see, like, what was it, Manny, your man Manny, giving up yeah. the ingredients. <laughs> Danny yeah. literally had nothing, like literally nothing. And then yeah. you already mentioned Michelle giving up some of her pineapple to Savannah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, mm-hmm. That was really nice to yeah, see. Yeah, I thought that was really nice. You work together. Yeah. And guess what? If you work together, your team might be on the winning side. Huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uplift each other and you'll all rise. I think it's 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 very true in this instance. <laughs> also, this is like this is like such a small, like niche thing. Uh-huh. But I love the aprons that they use in this show Ooh. so much. The color palettes for like specifically for the purple aprons <laughs> in this challenge. So nice. So pastel. So perfect. Green is my favorite color. Ooh. So I had like two good apron like colors here and I was like living for it. I thought it was great. Very nice. I've never I, you, I've never thought of it. I've never looked at the aprons. <laughs> that way. I, I, you know, I don't. I just really like a good apron, probably because I'm so prone to 
what culinary terror and like <laughs> coating myself in raisin sauce on accident when I'm in the kitchen, <laughs> things like that, you know, just your normal kitchen things. <laughs> How can you tell which of the co-hosts on this podcast actually cook? <laughs> <laughs> it's you who appreciates a good answer. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> Are you ready for the immunity check? So ready for the immunity check. (laughs) What do we got? What do we got? So let's see. Who had immunity going into the elimination? That was Mm Rastika. And who was in the top last week? I figured I'd make a note of that. That was Rastika and Danny. Mm -hmm. So they got split up this week, separate teams. And then who won immunity for next week? That was our man, Dan. Mm -hmm. So I guess the question is, did having immunity have impact? (laughs) Hmm. This time, I don't feel that it did, because Rossica was on the the team that came out above the line in this challenge. Yeah. Um, I feel like though it does, it probably raised the stakes for Danny personally though, mm. knowing that he was one of the two choices in that last episode yeah. to get immunity, but because Rossica got it and he didn't, he's put on that extra edge, yeah. and then on top of that. They had obviously the difficulties that we discussed in their their teamwork and and maybe psychologically there was an effect for the immunity check. Right, right. <laughs> but it wasn't necessarily expressed. So yeah. it's speculation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty much what I thought too. It's like especially when they said his mm-hmm. tahini was a little oversalted. I felt a little bit nervous. And then I was so glad when Kamal yeah. said, Hey, it's fine with the bread. It's like, okay, okay, good. Yeah, he's my yeah. man, Danny. Yeah. He's safe. I know. <laughs> A little nervous. We're sweating every time our chefs are like up there at the <laughs> yeah. judges table and they're like, you could have done this differently. I'm like, oh, no, please. No, not today. <laughs> <laughs> like, not ready. <laughs> so that, yeah, I didn't think the immunity check would be very long. So that's the immunity check for this week. Mm-hmm. We'll see. Dan deserves it, though. I will say that. Yes. Yes. They raved. Mm-hmm. And I love a good, a good what was it? Uh, chicken liver mousse or pate, if you will. I, the idea of liver consuming that? No, thanks. I'm sorry. I, can't, I already said that I was like almost ready to become a vegetarian. The idea of, oh no, 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 no. Oh my gosh. I don't know. Maybe I'd be, maybe I'm terribly wrong. I've never tried it. So I really shouldn't be judging it like that. Like maybe it is delicious. Maybe I'd love it. I will say this. I will say this. A good chicken liver mousse or pate will remind you of peanut butter and jelly. I don't like peanut butter and jelly. Okay, then no, never never try it. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I mean, I love the comparison because now I kind of understand a little bit of what it might be like, but I've never been a jelly person. It's weird. (laughs) No, hey, hey, fair, fair. Yeah. So (laughs) not for everyone, but I did like the backstory because he said he had grown up going to supper clubs and um, yeah, all of all of these these experiences from childhood growing up. And we know from Rossica with her pretzel dessert that it's that kind of inspiration that really drives a good, a well composed dish. Mm, Yeah. So I was happy to see high speed dining's Dan the man up there. I should have picked you're, you're a little salty about that, <laughs> aren't you? I'm sorry. I got Ross and Danny. Come on. Come on, kids. <laughs> you should all, what you should do is you should just convince him to pick someone else. <laughs> Be like, oh, you should, you should really look into this other chef. I think I'll take, I'll take Dan. Don't worry. It's okay. I'll do it. <laughs> Oh, just, just do that. <laughs> you. I, got, I got a little Laura here on the, on the podcast today. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just thinking <laughs> it's just an idea what i'll, I'll put that, that in my back pocket because actually i'm a little a bit nervous about team ross what is it team 21 the run club i'm nervous about my run club the, yeah 21 run club yeah because yeah. they both over salted their dishes i'm just like oh no mm. come on kids but i mean they've been consistent in the past they've been very consistent in the past so they have they have been consistent. yeah yeah and this was this was like a team thing so it seems like nobody likes those. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm done now. <laughs> I just the collective groan when they were like, "It's team challenge." They're all like, "Oh, uh. again." I'm like, "Oh, <laughs> tell me the truth. What? How do you feel?" <laughs> hey, they're risky. I don't blame them. They're so risky. That's true. That is true. Yeah. Do you have any last tidbits for the elimination? I have. I have. I have two quotes for us from the elimination challenge. One. Kevin, my respect for Kevin has grown because he said, and I quote, Michelle is smart and he is correct because she is smart. And that's all. Um, (laughs) My other quote, (laughs) my other quote is from Charlie. Uh I just wanted to call back to mind his 
final words that he got to share on this episode of Top Chef, because not saying he's gone forever. He's in Last Chance Kitchen. Mm -hmm. He obviously still has a chance of coming back. Mm -hmm. We don't know. Mm -hmm. But he said, I always want to make sure my dish is representative of me, where I come from, my culture, my cuisine. And I just did that in every dish. And that makes me really happy. Yeah. I thought that was a really wonderful, beautiful way to close out his time for this episode of Top Chef. Yeah. I liked it. I, I have I have just a couple, which again, I cannot okay. I cannot believe this did not come up for you as a team, as the chief representative of Team M. M&M. Here I go again. Oh my gosh, what did I miss? Hold on. Michelle, quote, I'm a bleeping good team player. I'm a twin. So I am down yes. with teammates. Yes, Michelle backstory. <laughs> I paraphrase. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I love that. I love it. So fun. <laughs> again, in my notes, scratching it out. Oh, Keisha will say that. <laughs> Keisha's got her girl, Michelle. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I, I actually, I did have it in my notes, but like I had the part where I was like, oh, I love learning a little bit more about Michelle. Like she's a twin. That's so fun. But I was also like, I've been talking about her so much and I should probably stop. It might be like weird at this point. I'm just a fan. I think she's doing a great job. <laughs> Is there going to be a Michelle embargo? No. <laughs> no. How do you think she's at barbecue this week? Did she? <laughs> no, I don't think so. No. I don't think so. Oh, man. Anyone playing that drinking game? Because no, I mean, dry. I mean, I'm happy she got to do the dessert, though, because yes. she knocked it out of the park. She like, did. it sounded so good. She did. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. And then <laughs> this is my final last tidbit. Yeah. <laughs> when Kevin's steak came to the table and again, the comedian Kamau coming through with the that meat still has a name. I know. Oh my gosh. Jeez. <laughs> like funny, but also brutal. Oh my goodness. Oh wow. That's my tidbit. I love that. I missed it on the first watch. Did you? <laughs> yeah. I had to watch that scene again because someone told me about it. I was like, what? I got to watch that again. You're like, what did he say? <laughs> That's so good. All right, it is that time of the podcast again. We are welcoming back High Speed Dining on with the segment Snack Time. Woohoo! I'm here! Yay! <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Another wonderful week of Top Chef, and here we are discussing it and having a good time. That is true. Now, before we get into things, I wanted to ask, this is a question to both of you. Have either of you done your culinary homework that we had assigned from last week. Did you try the pickles and peanut butter combo? I have failed. You chicken out? I did not try pickles and peanut butter combo. Oh, you didn't do it? I t- did you? I I too have failed. I actually forgot. I was, I was gonna- No! <laughs> I forgot to get the supplies. Okay. This will happen. That's okay, okay, okay. I, let me just say, we discussed this as a food crime. However, mm-hmm. I tried it um, <laughs> oh, and I liked it. Uh, it was actually good. <laughs> there you go. What? I, I had like, it was the smaller, the smaller pickles. Um, so the ones that have like a really nice crunch to them, like the ones that are like little <laughs> bar pickle kind of things, like not sliced pickles, not the big like sandwich ones or anything like that, like the smaller ones. Oh. And I had crunchy peanut butter. Those are the things that I had on me. Okay. And it actually worked really well together. The sweetness of the peanut butter with like the tang of the brine from, from the pickle. <laughs> I was so surprised, but I had a few. It was actually good. So not a food crime. Oh. But I'd like to hear your guys' opinions just to see if I am skewed. <laughs> I'll, I'll have to try it. But the closest I got this week were crispy plantain chips and guacamole. Oh, hey, now that sounds good, though. <laughs> That's a legitimate restaurant food. And yeah, it was really tasty. And mm. I've got a lot of the plantain chips left. So maybe I'll dip it into some peanut butter. We'll see. <laughs> I wish I could have. I the last time I had plantain chips was such a long time ago, but I miss them. Those those are delicious. Yeah, yeah, they're they're pretty solid. That was one of my good bites this week, but I think the best bite I had was a chow and mushi, a little bowl of chow and mushi at Capo. It's a Japanese omakase restaurant here in DC that does an eight course tasting menu mm. that is Wagyu beef centric. So most dishes have Wagyu beef wow. and huge amounts of it. So much so by the end of the night, you're like, oh my God, 
you you almost feel overly full from all the fat that's in the meat but it's oh wow <laughs> it's really good very enjoyable and it's a small little mm. chef's counter so it makes it uh, nice and intimate it was good i enjoyed that chow mushi i like a good egg custard and this one was silky smooth and savory it was so it was so incredibly perfect it ate so light creamy wow yeah and if you stir it up a bit you can sort of drink it and chug it like a soup oh <laughs> that was a tasty bite so but wow so you guys were you guys were having some real tasty stuff and i was embarking on pickles and peanut butter i really feel like we all stuck together this week <laughs> What what kind of pickle was it? Was it was it a dill pickle? Was it a uh, what kind of pickle was it actually? Oh, it was not bread and butter. It had to be dill, right? It definitely not bread and butter. Yeah, it had to be dill. I so I remember I got it from Sam's Club, and it's in a shorter jar. It's like because there's the big jar, which are like the like full size pickles, but then there's the shorter jar. <laughs> and you're right, it is dill pickles. <laughs> Oh, so have you found the pickle that it was, Keish? I did. It's it's this little guy. It's dill pickles. It's like the Members Mark Sam's Club brand, but I'm sure you can go with any any variety, not just Sam's Club. So <laughs> petite dill pickles and peanut butter. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. It is on. Was it a creamy or a chunky peanut butter? I had I had a crunchy peanut butter, but I feel like you could do creamy because you still have the crunch and the snap from the pickle. A double crunch sounds really cool. That crunchy pickle, crunchy nuts. Yeah, it, it was kind of nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you're making me hungry again. <laughs> With peanuts and pickles. Okay, good, good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I used to work for my cousin who owned a kosher butcher shop and mm. distribution things. And he had all different kinds of pickles. So we would often do pickle tasting and uh, just enjoy stuff. Okay. Big differences in all the pickles. Well, you know, we have coming up in our, in our life, high speed dining, we have a pickles and peanut butter tasting coming up in our life. Yeah, you do. We do. That'll have to happen this weekend. <laughs> yes. Get those dill pickles, get that peanut butter, get it done. Yeah. So, so this week on Top Chef, in, in case there's any mystery about who the top four is, let me, let me, let me settle that right now. Same top four, mm -hmm. has not changed. <laughs> Manny, Michelle, Rothlika, and your man, Dan, High Speed Dining, still in the top four. And it rhymes. Dan the man, yeah. Mm -hmm. He's been doing good. I enjoyed things. And his dish from this episode was probably the most standout for me. His snack round, mm -hmm. uh, all sorts of little snacks. I, th I thought he did a great job with that. And mm. uh, I would love to be dipping into that with some crunchy vegetables and whatnot. Yeah, that was an exciting dish. And I really enjoyed this week doing a supper club for th the main thing because it's a great way to do a tasting menu in essence. It's oh. uh, everyone sits down together at the same time, has the same set meal. Mm. You know, I, I, I don't think people in the Midwest in general go to fine dining tasting menu restaurants on a regular basis, a lot of them. <laughs> but this is a way that it is a tasting menu and uh, the same type of uh, scenario. So, you know, it reminds me, I was recently at a tasting or a supper club a uh, place in Philadelphia called Her Place Supper Club. Oh. They're open Monday through Friday only, two seatings a night. It only seats 24 people. And wow. you take a seat. They have about a six-course meal. There's some extra snacks as well. But they bring, you know, everyone eats the same food together. And mm -hmm. the chef will announce to the crowd about what inspired the dish, how it came about, the ingredients. Different chefs will often describe different dishes. And every two weeks, they have a brand new menu. Pretty wild. Whoa. That's a lot. That's a lot of changes for a restaurant. So mm -hmm. um, it brought back yeah. memories of that meal, which uh, it's great when you can really just have that communal meal and setting, sit down with everyone, and we all get served the same things. Uh, you know, uh, I like the fact that everyone can now talk about the same foods together. Instead mm. of going to a restaurant, ordering a la carte, and the only way you can talk about the same thing is if you order it or you, you know, you try and eat off of someone else's plate. And I don't like to share, so that's a hard time to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Steal a little ravioli there when they're not looking. <laughs> yeah, so. 
So I thought that was a great episode and a fun thing. And, you know, I'm always learning about how popular that these supper clubs are in the, the Midwest in these areas. Same. Yeah. I had no idea. Keish, you're, you visit the Midwest quite frequently. Have you ever heard of a supper club? I have never heard of a supper club. I, I mean, I was also raised in families that we didn't go out to eat a whole lot. So, oh, right. you know, we're, we're keeping in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> All those pickles and peanut butter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, you see, it's really honed a very refined palate in me, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, well We'll we'll give you our assessment of pickles and peanut butter next week. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I want to know if I'm just like huh. crazy now or if there's actually something there because I wasn't expecting it. I trust your palate. And so I suspect. Thank you. I suspect it could work out. Thank you for the vote of confidence. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm a little less terrified. <laughs> okay, good, good. If I can at least... it assure you in some way before the experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I wanted to share this quote with you, High Speed Dining, in case you missed it. So this is, this is from Dan the Man. And he said, even though I have physical limitations, my brain is sharp as a pencil. I know how to put flavors together. It just reaffirms the fact that I belong here. Yeah, that stood out to me too when he mentioned that. You know, it's, mm. it, it's good to see that's, he may have some physical issues, but you know, he's he's still at the top of his game at his craft and that's that's exciting. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure he could he could cook lying down in bed. <laughs> he's that talented, I think. You go, Dan. I, I do wonder how he's going to do you know, the team challenges have been a little bit of a boon for him because he's he's had some help. He's done well on his own as well, but I do wonder how he's going to be able to to keep competing as it gets down more down to the wire I'm, I'm cheering for him even though he's not on my team i'm cheering for him <laughs> well I, th I think he's gonna do all right so it's been fun i'm enjoying this i look forward to watching top chef every week now mm -hmm. and it's you know i get some snacks i kick back late night and it's just like here we go i love it i love that i brought you you two newbies along and i love that you're both enjoying the show because oh yeah <laughs> so we received one of our first comments on social media this past week yay that's great you gotta love comments <laughs> and i was actually thrilled very excited even though and we we discussed it a little bit earlier before you came on high speed Donnie, and i said ultimately that the comment was actually fair because i did go a little hard on on top chef last week after the right way and the bizarre elimination and the whole the whole thing about it it wasn't it wasn't a good comment? I would say it was a fair comment. Oh. They said that we yucked their yum. And I and I, I agree. I did yuck the yum. I don't plan to do that in the future. <laughs> but I liked how when I sent you the comment before I responded. And the reason why I did is because, so Keisha, I want to give you a little background. So High Sweet Dining is approaching a million followers on social media. Actually, you might be over. I'm at about 1.2 million when you combine TikTok and Instagram. Hmm. That's a lot. Yeah. One of the ways that he has grown his account is not just by having amazing content, but it's also Thank you. the way he deals with comments. Mm. He is a pro. And I have, <laughs> <laughs> so I put a, put a couple examples in the notes so that <laughs> you could see them. And I'm, I'm going to share a couple. Oh, very good. Yes. One, one, one particular comment. And I know that you said you like this one, Keish. So I'm going to read this one first. What was it? It was the eat the rich. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and then. High Speed Dunny responded, do they taste like chicken? <laughs> Classic. Perfect way to respond to that. Everything tastes like chicken, right? I'm sure the rich do too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then here's here's another one. Magic is evil. Turn to the Lord. And this is how High Speed Dunny responded. He said, my Lord is a, wiz a wizard in the kitchen. Praise chefs. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love to turn things around. You know, comments come in constantly. And that's what social media has become anonymous people just yelling at people and you know since there's no repercussions for them and i like to have a good time i have a comedy background so when i approach a comment i will admit my first thought is that's your first thought but you do not want to write a comment like that because that just doesn't go anywhere. And that actually feeds into why mm. these people write hateful comments. They want to get you angry and rile you up and upset oh, you. Yeah. So mm. I think that for a second, take a breath, and then they go, okay. 
how can I reply that's going to be funny, turn it around, and, um, you know, A, sometimes try and win these guys over, but B, I want to mm. make this funny for everybody else who's going to read. You know, the reality is, is you're answering comments to an individual person, but anybody who watches your video will probably read your comment or potentially will. Oh. And I want to make them laugh that's and true. I want to get them on my <laughs> side. So that's mm. why I try and do everything in a funny manner. And, you know, I spend a little time sometimes trying to think about it. Um, so when the comments come in, I usually you can get angry, but then you find a way to try and turn it around and and instead of getting angry, get even, have fun with it. And so I've been doing a lot of that. I, have, I mean, literally tens of thousands of comments I've replied to. I take a lot of pride in knocking people back, taking punches back, and you know, usually I get the best of them. So yeah, you never punch down. He does not punch down. <laughs> and I rarely show anger in my replies. So it's the best place for humor. And the somebody writes something negative, and you find a way to really turn it into something funny and enjoyable. You know, when we often, uh, well, I'll often share these comments on my stories and Instagram and things like that. And you know, a funny comment goes a long way. That's you know, when we share these comments mm. with my followers, my replies, I get a lot of people writing back to me going, great job, or that's so funny, or you showed them, and, you know, don't don't worry about the haters. Mm. And I'm like, worry? I love getting hateful comments. It makes me so happy. Oh. You, you can't really crack a joke to someone who goes, hey, I love what you do. But you can yeah. really crack a joke back at someone who's negative towards you. That's a really good way to put a positive spin on it. So I love negativity. Oh, <laughs> that phrase out of context from what you've just said, that would be very confusing. I love negativity. Oh. If we didn't have the preface, I'd, that would be a very confusing thing to hear. <laughs> true, true. But you, you hear so many people who get upset and yeah. they hate social media and it makes, you know, they, they take comments to heart and mm -hmm. it's just, you got to relax with this stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, all that matters is what your friends say. So, and your friends will never be negative towards you, but <laughs> haters are haters. And you know what? Yeah. Hate them back, get them back, you know, yeah. uh, use them to try and win them over or to mm. just get other people to laugh with you. Yeah. And, and a lot of times what'll happen is, People will message him back, maybe privately, or 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 they'll message back on the comment and they'll say, "Oh, hey, I was just, I was just playing, I was just trolling, I was just." They'll they'll seriously back down, and he's managed to turn people around. And I gotta say, mm. his comments mm -hmm. are, especially if the video is really blown up, are a very fun, fun place to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you have to remember. So here's how the comments come in, and why they come in in social media. When your videos don't go viral, they're just being shown to your fans and followers. So they generally have positive things to say. But when your video starts to go viral, it's being fed to strangers, to newbies, people who don't know you, and they just love to hate on you. So when you start getting hate, that's a sign of your videos doing well. So you need to take that as a positive thing. Mm. When you know the negativity starts, that means you're being shown to, to newbies and, and people outside of your inner circle. And that's how you grow and really advance in the social media world. So that's the first joy you must take in the hate. What I'm gonna suggest is, I think anyone who hears this right now or watches this, they should write a comment to you guys to help get you to, oh. to respond more, to learn how to handle things. I'd hope they'd be positive comments. Well, well, well hold, hold on, hold on. I, uh, you need to specify first. You gotta say, you gotta <laughs> say what kind of comment you're expecting these people to leave, okay? Because if you don't specify, you, you better say positive comments. <laughs> be nice, please. <laughs> well, I'm challenging people to, I'm challenging people to write a comment to you. Okay, well. <laughs> well, I'd say, please write a nice comment, but I say just write any comment so th that there's fun things to read while people are actually listening to your podcast and things like that. I challenge all the listeners or the haters, write something in now. Good, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Unsolicited. Oh, my gosh. I am, we're sending all those to you. You're going to have a good time with this. <laughs> this is great. 
Oh my goodness. <laughs> write in comments, everybody. Oh, no. Yes. You can write some in for me too. Oh my goodness. <laughs> All right. It's been fun talking to you guys. This is great. I hope you learned a little bit from my how to reply to comments and turn them in your favor. Yeah, yeah I did. How about you, Keish? I learned, I learned a few things. Yeah. I mean, I got a little something. It's true because you can you can take the the positive feedback is wonderful, but there's also ways that you can you can spin the the not so positive comments. And I think that's a good lesson. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Well, I'll have to write some comments to you this week and uh, we'll see if I have an anonymous account or two to do it with. (laughs) (laughs) Mm, Be nice, please. Thank you. Thanks for joining us (laughs) for snack time. (laughs) My pleasure. Yeah, thanks. (laughs) (laughs) We'll see you next time. Stay full. Thank you, High Speed Dining. And we will have you on next time, of course. Thank you. Well, as I said, this episode was full of hills and valleys, not just for Charlie, but for everyone. They were some really interesting challenges. We had Chef Gully's sauces to pull from, shopping blind in the farmer's market, and team challenges galore. So I thought it was engaging. I thought it raised the stakes a lot. Um, And I'm excited to see where they go with it next week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, next week. Ooh, So next week on Top Chef, so in the trailer I saw... It's going to be chaos cuisine. Mm, okay. Yes. So when I say chaos cuisine, what does that mean to you, Keish? <laughs> um, chaos cuisine. <laughs> Is it like our food crimes? <laughs> Is it like horrible crimes in the culinary world? <laughs> I had to look it up. So apparently, yeah, chaos cuisine, and this is this is going to be a little bit of a segue into my tasty morsel. Okay, perfect. Because I had to look this up. What on earth is chaos cuisine? <laughs> so, so next week on, they're going to have for the guest judges some the two that I recognize from the trailer is going to be Christina Tosi mm-hmm. from Master Chef and also Momofuku, the Momofuku restaurants. Ooh, I ate there. So she's a pastry chef and also. If you have ever heard of Milk Bar, that's her, the Milk Bar desserts. Mm. And then the other guest judge that I saw from the trailer is going to be Maddie Matheson from The Bear. Ah. Yeah, when I saw that, I, even before I looked up what Chaos Cuisine was, <laughs> I, I thought, oh, that is absolutely perfect. Because if you've ever seen The Bear, which is only on Hulu, it's a pressure cooker of a show. I'll, I'll maybe go into it more next week, but there's this one episode where it's a single shot. And it's the most stressful episode. It's pure chaos. Something, everything that can go wrong in a kitchen goes wrong in that episode. <laughs> and so I uh, just mm. knowing that he's going to be, and he, he's one of the writers, but he's also a chef in real life. So knowing that he's going to be on for the episode, like I'm pumped. Mm, okay. I'm excited. Yeah. It's going to be chaos in the kitchen. <laughs> oh gosh. As if there hasn't already <laughs> been like, jeez. <laughs> So chaos in this case, mm-hmm. to get a little more specific, according to Eater, mm-hmm. it's it's not fusion per se. You might think of, and I'm just going to quote Eater because I really still am not quite sure I have my mind wrapped around what chaos cuisine is. Okay. So mm-hmm. there is a new crop of restaurants and pop-ups that have begun serving not just fusion, but aggressive, weird, trolley fusion that's also thoughtful, incredibly well-received, and actually pretty good. So for, and then they gave a list of examples after this quote. So Mm. cheeseburger arancini, Big Mac pizza, pastrami tacos, tandoori spaghetti, masala cheesesteaks. The the list actually goes on and on and on. But the reason why I wanted to bring this up now rather than next week is because Mm -hmm. my thought after looking this up was thinking, ooh, this might be a challenge that, given the right circumstances, of course, because in Top Chef Kitchen, you never know. Yeah. Rasika and Michelle ah. may very well excel in, because if we think about what they've been cooking over this season, mm-hmm. it seems to me like chaos cuisine, at least how it's being defined here by Eater. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Right? Like, so for example, when Take It Cheesy, when Michelle made that sag cheese dish, that's an Indian dish, mm-hmm. but she used, you know, an American cheese. And I know that's not necessarily maybe like what they're thinking of chaos cuisine, but that's definitely in my mind a step to right. it. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. You would yeah. never actually do that. Or Rasika putting meat in a in a in a vegetarian dish, right? That's true. And she's yeah. Really taking her Tamil background and flavors and blending them with these insane mm. challenges. In my mind, that's kind of what maybe they're thinking about with chaos cuisine maybe yeah so 
that's why I wanted to bring that up as my tasty morsel for this week. Mm, I like it. That that makes me more excited about <laughs> next week because I, I sincerely didn't know what to expect at all. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> and of course, I could be wrong about all of this. <laughs> Who actually knows what's going to happen? <laughs> <laughs> it could go in a completely other direction. Yeah, we don't know. <laughs> exactly. 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 <laughs> Thank you for coming along with us on this journey this week in the Top Chef episode Supper Club. We've enjoyed having you along on this culinary journey, and we look forward to having you along next time. If you'd like to find us on social media, you can find us at Food and Dine or Food and Dine Podcast. You can listen to us wherever you listen to your podcasts. We drop our podcast, Food and Dine, um, every Sunday after Top Chef airs. Welcome to the table. Let's eat.